A conference on transplantation will be held in honor of Dr. Thomas Starzl, the man who pioneered the field of transplantation. As a matter of fact, it was 25 years ago that Dr. Starzl first gave someone a second chance by performing a kidney transplant, and he has been a driving force in the transplant field ever since. Stacy is here now with a look at this pioneer. Stacy, Ray, nearly everyone in Pittsburgh knows his name and what he does, but few people have a chance to see Dr. Starzl at work. We got the opportunity a few weeks ago to follow him around for just a half a day. In that 12 hours, we got a glimpse of a man who will go down in medical history. We witnessed decisions concerning life and death, and we had the opportunity to see that what was, what was once a dream just 25 years ago is now a standard practice in medicine. Hi. She has a little fever, does she, or a big yes, fever? A little. It is a Tuesday afternoon, and Dr. Thomas Starzl makes a quick visit to Children's Hospital. My mother was a nurse. In fact, I, I can't ever remember wanting to do anything else. And, and in fact, I'm pretty sure I wanted to be a surgeon from an early age. Okay, well, uh, I'll be back in a little bit then. Seemingly in constant motion, Starzl makes his way to a regular Operation. Tuesday conference, where it is decided if potential candidates should be given a liver transplant. But Starzl didn't start with livers. It was 25 years ago that he performed the first successful kidney transplant from a donor who wasn't a twin. Starzl's interest in transplants, especially liver transplants, was sparked 37 years ago while in med school. How's John doing? He was attending a pathology conference given by Dr. Hans Popper. Dr. Popper um, uh, gave autopsies for the class, and he, I remember he showed a patient who had died of, of um, liver disease, of cirrhosis, and he pointed out at the time that the only thing that could conceivably have saved the patient would have been transplantation. But it was just a, uh, a mirage almost. It was certainly a dream at that time. In 1958, and, uh, Starzl decided to try to make that dream a reality. He was given the opportunity for a special scholarship, a scholarship which meant making a lifetime commitment to one field of research. And it uh, boiled down to two fields. One was oncology, or the study of cancer. And how is she? And the other was transplantation, but I, and I took transplantation because cancer looked too easy. And everyone was saying that the cure for cancer was just around the corner. Yes, she's drinking. This was 30 years ago. Of course, they're still saying the same thing. But um, transplantation at that time was really pronounced to be uh, an impossibility. So. I thought, well, that, that might be the thing to do. For four years, he worked in the lab, mapping out the techniques for transplanting the kidney, the, uh, liver, the pancreas, and intestines. But it was perfecting a drug that would help stop rejection that moved him from the lab to the operating room. And so in January, we did our first kidney transplant. And that patient is still alive and is coming to this conference. And then a second one was done in May. Um, a young black boy whom I remember so well. Um, and then we did another one in, uh, I think, November, another one in December. And um, uh, all of those patients are still alive. But on this Tuesday, it is livers that occupies Starzl's time. With his transplant team assembled, he quickly assesses each patient's case and leads them in deciding what to do. Well, then I wouldn't uh, do anything. I'd just give her a new liver because it, uh, you're dealing with a operation for a disease in which the results are predictably poor and then she'll end up with a um, Sammy Press syndrome or one of those things where you may or may not succeed after 150 bottles of blood. I think uh, we're trying to teach people not to do this uh, intervening and for the most part futile operation so futility is what faced starzl when he first attempted to transplant livers spurred on by the success of his kidney transplants at the university of colorado he tried his first series of liver transplants we failed we made five attempts uh, at liver transplantation in 1963 and then in the court toward the tail end of that there was there were attempts made also in boston at the brigham and um, in Paris, and all of these uh, attempts failed. Oh. So the whole um, thing I collapsed, got, and um, uh, we good examples here. Uh, declared a moratorium on further efforts. Didn't make any further efforts until 1967. It was that year that Starzl's team came up with another drug to help fight rejection. That drug also allowed other surgeons to begin transplanting the heart, lung, and pancreas. But for Starzl and his team at Pitt, this Tuesday brings word that three donor livers are available. 
One is passed over because of the donor's condition. But the decision is made to retrieve the other two and give two dying people a second chance at life. We've got a, a nice young woman with sclerosing cholangitis, uh, big liver, uh, no question for a change of portal or anything. Who should we have to her tonight? It's a, it's a nice case. We've got a, a difficult situation at the children's with the kid with a proton that's running 50 or 60 uh, seconds. Uh, and what I thought I might do there is to go get the organ. You're going to go get the adult? Is that the idea? All right. Now we have to figure out who the recipient team is going to be. It's up to you. Where is the donor? You need your local donor. It's fabulous. Luis, are you uh, on or off tonight? Uh, I'm off. Why? Should the two of us and uh, Fletcher go on this donor, should we? All right. All right. It's time to go. We have to go now. And tomorrow night, we will go with Dr. Starzl to North Carolina to retrieve that pediatric liver. Ray, Patty, uh, there's one thing. He, we were with him for 12 hours. He says he's slowing down. He's 60 years of age. And those 12 hours, I, I swear, it would be a half a work week for most of us. It, mm -hmm. He is constantly on the move. He, he's an unbelievable man. Tomorrow, we'll see more of him. Look forward to that, Stacy. Thanks.